What's good? It's your boy Fanon. All right, man, let's talk about this replacement for Jarrell Big Baby Miller in the Anthony Joshua fight. A uh, report came out of World Boxing News, which pretty much confirms other reports that have come out of from the Cali Enigmas channel, who's usually way ahead on this on this particular subject. Uh, the Eddie Hearn that Anthony Joshua's shortlist disintegrates down to one name. Man, man, man. And it is somebody that most people have never heard of. And that is Michael Hunter, a guy that has fought at heavyweight four times, 30 year old out of fights out of Las Vegas from California and a big which really makes this fight against uh, Anthony Joshua come to the United States. Like, really, why? But we'll go over what the article says and, you know, the different options and what it means. But before I do that, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. I truly, truly appreciate your support. And if you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon. And when you hit the bell icon, make sure you hit all notifications. And that way you'll get notified of when we release our videos and also when we do our live streams, which we do Monday through Friday, start time around 10, 45 a.m. Central Standard Time and a special show on Sunday, OG, OG Boxing Talk with myself, Blood Boxing and KQKC Boxing. So let's get with this one and also check out the Patreon and thank you so much, Patreon, to the Patreons for the support on Patreon. Got another one coming up today. So in this article, which, by the way, this is basically repeating the same thing that I was listening to the live stream on Cali Enigma's channel. If you're not familiar with the Cali Enigma, Cali Enigma is uh, is close with the Luis Ortiz camp, specifically with their uh, with their manager, uh, J- with the manager, Jay Jimenez, who's and he's been break- basically been breaking news on this for several days, well ahead of the mainstream media. But there's now a report in the World Boxing News uh, that's pretty much saying the same thing that Cali was saying on his live stream. So let me go through that. But I definitely wanted to credit uh, Cali Enigma for the great reporting that he's been doing on this subject. Now, Matchroom Boss said that the likes of Luis Ortiz, Adam Konaki, uh, Manuel Char, Agit, uh, man, I always have a hard time with his name, and Michael Hunter were possible replacements for Jarrell Big Baby Miller. As people remember, Jarrell Big Baby Miller was denied a license in New York uh, because he had tested positive for a VADA test in March. And then Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearn had to find a replacement. Obviously, one of the, re- the first thing that people really wanted to, and the biggest, the best name for this fight was Luis Ortiz. But Eddie Hearn said that Luis Ortiz was one of the first people that I that I spoke to actually his manager a guy named Jay Jimenez who we worked with before he told me it was short notice I disagree with them but they are going to be speaking to their fighter I think Luis Ortiz is a great fight he has been promised a wilder fight as well by his team which is a bit worrying to us to hear that news now this is what the Cali Enigmas reporting is that this is not about whether or not uh that they do have an offer and that the Wilder camp definitely does want Luis Ortiz in the mix for a rematch. But that the real sticking point on this is that Luis Ortiz said, give me the same amount of money that you give that you gave Jarrell Miller. And since this is short notice and um, and it's a tough fight, give us the same money. Right. If it was more notice, then we could have some flexibility on on the on the money for the fight. But they do have a Deontay Wilder fight standing there and that there's a better offer for the Deontay Wilder fight than they would be getting for the Anthony Joshua fight. So that is kind of the play that, um, from my understanding, that Luis Ortiz had. That's the that is the position that Luis Ortiz is 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 in. Um, that if he had a full training camp, then, uh, but he doesn't. So if it's on short notice, he wants the same money that Jarrell Big Baby Miller was going to get, which isn't a real issue. But if they offered him that money, if they just gave him the same agreement that they gave Jarrell Big Baby Miller, then that fight could be made. So it's not what's necessarily being, it's not necessarily what's being described by 
Eddie Hearn here, at least in this excerpt excerpt of the of the interview that Eddie Hearn gave. But, you know, there is some truth to it, obviously, that Deontay Wilder wants Luis Ortiz as a future opponent could be after the his mandatory with Dominic Brazil. Should he get past that with Dominic Brazil? And that there's a considerable amount of money on the table for Luis Ortiz versus Deontay Wilder, which would make sense because in the U.S., more than likely, that's a pay-per-view fight between the rematch between Luis Ortiz and Deontay Wilder. So it would make sense that Luis Ortiz would say, look, man, give me the same money for Jarrell Big Baby Miller because I'm taking a lot of risk in uh, in taking this on short notice when I have a fight that's going to pay me more money against Deontay Wilder. Now, as far as the rest of these guys, you know, it's just a real it's not a good look, man, for uh, for Anthony Joshua's presence in the United States. Now, I've heard different numbers thrown around about the ticket sales that have been made for uh, for this fight. The fight that was supposed to be with Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Now, to the defense of Anthony Joshua's team, Jarrell Big Baby Miller wasn't a particularly big name in the United States either or anyway. So it was always kind of like, you know, how much interest from American fans is this really going to generate? Because the fight's not on American TV. And for the people to say, oh, this is zone. Now, the zone is an application is an app and it's not one that is widely that there's a lot of people that are subscribed to it or have even heard of. So the visibility in the fight, because it's on the zone in the United States, is very limited. And from my understanding, the majority of these tickets that are being sold are people from the United from the UK coming over to the United States to watch Anthony Joshua fight in the United States. And to me, it just, man, it, it, don't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be doing it other than the fact that that the zone is really trying to is trying to build their market in the United States. But it just seems like a real, you know, seems like an ass backwards way to do it. And even I mean, they might have still even been better off getting a non-American for uh, for this fight. There's the, the idea that they have to have an American um like Michael Hunter be on the card because that would help sell it makes little to no sense to me because nobody really knows who Michael Hunter is and on top of that uh there are fights that take place in the United States all the time between fighters that are not from that are not both from the United States they happen on a they happen on a regular basis and they're Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez are not from the neither one of those guys are from the United States. And it's a and it was a good fight. You had fights between Eric Morales and uh De, you know between Mexicans that were neither one of these guys are from the United States. Now the Mexican situation is obviously a little bit different because Mexico borders on it, but there are plenty of examples of people who are not from the United States fight who two fighters not from the United States fighting in the United States. And having it be, you know, be a big fight. That happened with Lennox with Lennox Lewis versus Vitaly Klitschko. That was that fight was a fight that a lot of people were interested in. And Lennox Lewis is from the UK or Canada, whichever you know, however you guys want to do that, depending on the mood of the UK fans that you're talking to at the time. He's from Canada, and if they're in a good mood, he's from the UK. Regardless, he's not. Uh, he's not an American fighter. And neither was Vitaly Klitschko. So I don't really this all this conversation I keep hearing about how, you know, you need to pick a guy, you know, who's from America to try to as a selling point. You know, I, I, I noticed that they do that a lot in the UK, pretty much exclusively in the UK. They have, if not exclusively, dang near close to I can't think of an example of when there were two non uh, non Brits or people, two people not from the UK that were fighting in the UK. Definitely not an American fighting an American in the UK. So that seems to be more of a thing in the UK. But in the United States, people are pretty open to the to seeing two people from different countries fight one another. You know, and it happens on a regular basis. But really, what this is 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 Anthony Joshua getting a soft touch. That's the problem. 
The soft touch is the problem. The fact that Anthony Joshua is not very well known in the United States is the problem. The fact that it's going to be is going to be held off on the zone. That's and there's not going to be any lot of publicity or note or notoriety around the fight at all. Man, it seems to me as if they would have just been better off holding this thing in the UK. But, you know, anyway, it is what it is. And we'll see what's happening. Um, It's probably going to be Michael Hunter for the replacement. And we'll see what it is. And with that, I'm out.